three, two, one. Oh, 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 zero liftoff. You know what day it is. It's Friday, March 3rd, 2023. Are we talking 3323, folks? You bet your butt we are. Uh, and we are talking happy Friday, happy SketchUp Live Day to everybody who celebrates. Um, it's going to be a fun stream today. It's going to be a cool stream. It's going to be a woodsy stream because we're doing woodworking today. Tyson, you see him here. He's going to be walking you through uh, how do you take an idea to a plan and layout to real deal 3D wood. Folks, he's going to walk you through the entire thing. It's going to be great. And thank you for joining us. Let us know where you're coming in from in the chat. Happy Friday. Let's get into the sketch up and let's here he comes now, your host. He is approaching the stage, and it's Mr. Tyson Karchner. Make some noise! <laughs> Yay! All two people that are out there, thank you for joining us. <laughs> with, with you, Matt, and I, and two other people, we've doubled our numbers. Hey, Friday, that's awesome. Wow. Oh, you, you bet you you bet it. It's it's really <laughs> awesome. Unreal. Whoa. I, I can I, I never feel like I can live up to your intros. Your intros are so epic. <laughs> okay. Hey, no, you don't have to live up to them. I will I will continue the audio as it says on the on the titles on the screen here. I will be the one you hear. You're the one you see, and you're bringing the real deal stuff because you're bringing the 3D, you're bringing the geometry, you're bringing the uh a sketch up today so that's what people are here to to see they're probably right. mute it halfway through mm -hmm. just because of there will be sick of my sound effects and stuff like that <laughs> i'm cool i man. don't get sick of your sound effects i'm here for it so i appreciate that i appreciate that breathtaking <laughs> on cue well let's have a look at what we're gonna do then um let's uh let's jump over to this model here That's a pretty much we're done. Ah. Folks. That was amazing. Uh, that was a quick one. <laughs> Happy weekend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nah, this is this is uh this is where the idea came from. So I, I want to do a quick walkthrough. But uh while I walk through a bit of kind of the idea and then we'll this isn't exactly what we're gonna build. Maybe it is, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, let us know where you're coming in from. Um, we always love to see some of the folks that, that join us each week, but hopefully there's a, a few new people that are, that are joining us. So do let us know. Um, yes, absolutely. I see Minnesota. I see UK, Virginia, uh, Peru. Uh, hello. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming in. Well, it's like to have you awesome. in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Jump in, introduce yourself, keep letting us know. Um, this, this project, uh, you can see it's got a nice Pokemon ball. Uh, this was something that I was working on with one of our, our buddies on the video team, Donovan. Uh, he was going to build this for his son as sort of a, a keepsake box for, for a couple of things. And he wanted to do it in the Japanese toolbox style. And, and so I want to show what that meant. And then we might do something similar. So what cool. that means generally, um, I, I'm not going to speak like I'm an expert on it, uh, is that this top has this wedge and it's angled. So when you pull that wedge out, this is able to slide. And so it slides oh, okay. over and that un you can see over here. So that gives it enough room that then you can twist it. Oops. This one. That's, that's clever. It is clever. Um, it's a cool little piece. So you can twist that out and take the top off, but yeah, the top locks in otherwise. And then in here can be whatever you want, right? And for his purposes, he wanted, uh, he's got some Pokemon cards and a couple of books. And then we put
put in this tray, you can put one or two trays in here. It's a, it's really simple. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the top of this, that locking, you just put it over, drop it in, move it over and lock it. And that's Ooh, how that nice. works. I like the undo animation. You got to go in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> That was cool. Yeah, no. I, I have to say, I wasn't familiar with the uh, Japanese toolbox um, idea, the 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 whole category of these. But uh, after looking it up in preparation for this, I was like, oh wow, there's a lot of uh, a lot of plans out there, a lot of kind of you know the people who make this kind of thing, and it does seem like it's a you know it's an approachable project for somebody who you know it's not you're not building a table or like you know something crazy. Um, and yeah. it, it's pretty, you know, it's a cool mechanism tool. So it's kind of fun to work on and show off. So that's a, it's a cool thing. And whenever you got Pokemon involved, you know, you got to catch them all. So you got to catch them all. <laughs> and I think the typical toolbox um, is simpler. You know, uh, it's always fun to try and add your own spin. And so in this case, uh, I, I flared out the sides a little bit, made enough room to do this through tenon and uh, added some uh, curves to the bottom. Uh, typically, it, it, it'll just have square sides and may even be joined by nails. Um, it's, it's a very functional box, typically. But so. <clears throat> nice. I like the little flourishes, though, the little arches. Yeah. On the bottom. Looks cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, beautiful. And let me just say, Hello to everyone from Baltimore, Louisiana, Phoenix, Connecticut, Utah, um, Italy, Romania. Uh, am I missing everybody? Miami. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hello and welcome. Wow. Um, fired up. Psyched that you're here to join us. That's so awesome. Holland. Wow. That's so great. Typically, Holland, I'd be like, you know, how's the, the snow there? But this weird week, at least in the U.S., we had this crazy weather system come across. And so yesterday, we were sunny and 60. And in Phoenix, you might have had snow yesterday. Whereas you're usually blazing hot. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a weird, weird uh, early spring so far, for sure, weather-wise. Mm -hmm. Goofy. So here's my thought. Um, I, for a project, this was perfect because Donovan had like specific ideas of what to put in here and we could, you know, you, you need some parameters, you need some design restrictions and we could stick to the, you know, those same ones or do something different. But my, my I guess what I wanna do is, since we're talking about just the idea process and then trying to take that all the way across the finish line. Um, I was going to build, I don't know, two or three boxes in the design stage, which is like very messy for me. It's, you know, digital sketching. And then we'll mm -hmm. pick one of those and figure out the joinery, add some details and then take it to layout. That's, that's the thought I have. I like it. That sounds like a, a great roadmap to me. I'm ready for, um, to go on a ride. Nice. Buckle so, um, <clears throat> I guess, I guess the first question that I'll throw out there, and and, and then we can see what people think as we move along. I was originally going to stick to this type of top, regardless of whatever the box is that we build. Uh, this wedged top, um, and. In, unless there's interest in, we want to just make a hinge top or one that just has a handle and and uh, goes on. So let us know uh, your thoughts in the comments if we should stick to this sort of Japanese wedge locking top or if there's interest in uh, doing something different. All right, I started a poll. So right. answer in the poll on um, which which top you want to add to this box. The interactivity going today, we're always looking to uh, get you involved. We want to show you, you know, as Aaron, as a great uh, man once said, and I, I guess I spoiled it that it's Aaron. Is, you know, we make <laughs> we like making these. 
If you like making these videos a lot, will you like them even more? When they're showing something you want to see. And hey, this is uh, living and breathing that mentality right here today. Yeah. <laughs> as a great man once said, as, as, as uh, Ernest Hemingway once said, we love building these models. We love them more when they're what you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> In the words of the immortal bard himself. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> I believe that was Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. He was talking about was wondering who was letting the dogs out. Mm -hmm. Transom saying the top should fit with the rest of the design. Um, right now, Wedge, a uh, commanding lead. So unless there's uh, some big changes here, tra horse changing midstream, it looks uh, like Wedge is going to take this one. Wedge Antilles coming Wedge from... Wedge Antilles. Not coming from behind, coming from, uh, you know, in a reasonable starting position, but... All right. Well, good. Um, we'll see if it's worth adding. <clears throat> uh, I have just, now that we've released 2023, uh, I don't have all my, my extensions installed yet. Ooh. But we have this new flip command, which, um, you know, there were other, there were extensions to do this, but I'll be using flip a decent amount today. Mm -hmm. Drag this over here to the midpoint, and that will mirror us there. Same thing here. Oops. I need a copy. This down maybe half an inch or something and all right so in this version actually i i think these legs are way too too big for But that's, so I, you know what, that's just, okay, that's one idea. Yeah, oh, I like it. Kind of looks like a, maybe a clawfoot tub or something. I don't know exactly what I'm I'm getting, what what it's giving, you know? Isn't that what the kids mm -hmm. say? It's giving, uh, I don't know. But yeah, that's cool. So let's... Do a version that's more like so I want to get rid of this and Maybe this one. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? I need to copy this around. You know what else I need to do? I think my arc is set to six from previously. Let me set that back to 12. So I'll grab that and that. Did a copy of those and I have both. I'm back to using Very my nice tablet time. right now. So I'm a, I find my tablets better for my wrist and shoulder, but I'm a little bit sloppier with it. What were you saying? Hey, it's always, uh, you know, it's a good place to be in when you can be a little sloppy, a little fast and loose and 
just uh, go for it and also protect the, you know, the shoulder as well. So um, I was saying, well, two things. One is that uh, looks like there's a little um, lag issue with our our video going on. So I'm watching at the same time as uh, as folks in the stream. So I'm just a couple seconds behind. It's no big deal. But just uh, letting you know that I might be uh, running a little behind from you. Um, and also Dave was curious, uh, you, when you originally drew the leg, you did it off to the side. He says, is there a reason for not drawing the leg in place? Um, he was just curious. Um, you know, no, other than I think in that case, um, because I was drawing uh, essentially something like this, where I was going to use follow me on that corner. Um, I just pulled it off to the side to make it easier to do the, or I guess to just differentiate it visually. Um, gotcha. I don't think there's a, a necessarily an advantage to it. Uh, Mm, cool. Come back to I don't like this one. <laughs> What's funny is like, well, I don't like it, so leave it alone. Nope. I have to come back. Even <laughs> if we're not going to use it, like, I just don't like it. So. Hey, it's always good to, uh, you know, keep fiddling, keep um, iterating is maybe a nicer word to use, a nicer way to put it. Um, <laughs> so it's something you like, you know? Uh, Lawrence had a question about uh, what scale are you working in? Um, I believe I made this box like um, I think I made it roughly 18 inches by 10 inches. Double check that. Yeah. 18 inches by 10. And that was completely arbitrary. Like again, this was a toolbox to house tools, then that uh, we, we should get, you know, some of the hand planes or chisels or measuring stuff and actually have a little more forethought into how big and how this would work. Um, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, you kind of figure out what your biggest tool would be and then go from there kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, is there, yeah, okay. I don't know if he's wondering because of like, you know, small faces issues, or I don't know if you're not doing anything, you know, so intricate that it would impact the, the creation of uh, small faces or. I think uh, we should be fine at this scale. When we get to adding some detail, it may be worth dealing with some, you know, that, that small issue, but at this, we should be fine. Mm -hmm. This one. I have to say the uh, the sound drops today are going to be mostly positive. I found this sound pack of just uh, guys saying, <laughs> just a bunch of clips of guys saying like positive things. Mind blowing! Wow! <laughs> Impressive! So, so everything you do that I can see here is just unreal. <laughs> Uh, I have dozens oh of these, so uh, you have a request. I'm sure it exists in there somewhere. Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying, and I hope this will all work out. I'm trying to use Flip as much as I can just to kind of get used to it. Truth is, I haven't used it mm -hmm. very much. Um. to see how well I like it. And so far, how are you feeling about it? 
Well, um, I I do really like it. I it, I think as a as a like visual feedback, it's it's very predictable. Even when I use mm -hmm. Curix mirror tool, which is typically my my preference, there are it's it's got a good feedback thing too. But um, there are cases where I'm not sure what I'm getting. Uh, whereas this one is definitely. I'm I'm usually quite sure what I'm what I'm gonna get. So I like that part. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with Curix mirror. So why what's the difference between? Like why um why is this one more predictable? Well, um I don't have it installed yet in this version. Um Gotcha. Yeah. Well, no so, need to show yeah. it, but is so it easily explainable, my hands a bit. or are we just move on? Yeah, there, there are certain things that I think Curix is still more interesting about because you can mirror Curix stuff with the rotate tool as well in an interesting way, and and flip is mm. is just sort of flipping along axes. But I, I definitely like that it's an improvement over flip along, and that it makes. I don't know, it just it, it makes it a much more viable tool for somebody just learning it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And I feel like it's good practice too to kind of almost force yourself to use it because if you, you know, any tool you use a lot, you get sort of a muscle memory for and you, you know, um, tend to do things the way you always have done them unless you, you know, mm -hmm. kind of intentionally whatever, use your left hand to do something or whatever to, uh, you know, to mix it up and learn some new stuff. Um, Lawrence, we don't have the whole thing of that. We do have fantastic. So we have that. Um, and <laughs> Keggy says, flipping heck, Tyson, you're killing the flip tool. So, <laughs> flipping. You're flipping awesome at the flip tool. So. And, uh, flip the flips. Um, all right, so I think we'll do just this one more possible option, which is kind of similar to what we were doing initially. Okay. And then pick one and keep going. Uh, this one. I like it. Uh, Lawrence had a question here. In the new tool, how are the mirror axes referenced? Do you know exactly what that is in reference to? I'm not sure what you mean, but uh, I'll take a guess and then please clarify. So if I take this and I want to mirror this, um, so if I, if I select this and um, flip, it's going to work along the red green axis and you know use this other geometry to do it it's always going to grab and give you whatever your selection is when you activate the tool it's going to give you kind of the center axis now if you have as just a quick example something off axis and i group it Um, I'm trying to remember, that's still working on the outside. Uh, I think there's a way to toggle between component axis and world axis. Oh, see, Matt's okay. throwing down some sweet knowledge. <laughs> Is that true? I just remember hearing that somewhere. Um, it, it maybe is there command toggle global and local axis yeah so i've got this i just switched it so i use flip but if i hit command it does yeah nice good call so i don't know maybe if that was the question or not but it's going to be an axis based on your selection and again based on your selection and whether you your component 
or group has a local axis, you can toggle between local and world axis. Um, which on Windows would probably be the option key toggling that. So, uh, right on. yeah. Killer. Nice. Yeah, thanks that's... for showing that. Yeah, Lawrence, if, if you're sure. referring to something else, please let us know. Um, but yeah. Cool. Got a thumbs up. Um, hi, all the new folks dropping in. Good to see you. I have to say, I'm kind of thrown off my game a little bit by being a little bit behind. I Now I know how tough it is to be in the chat and you're like on a little bit of a delay. I'm like, yeah. Ah, uh, darn it. That, oh, no, is... it's all good. Well, it's just but, weird. Uh, we we played around with it a little bit before we started and but we could not quite figure out what was going on. No sweat, and I'm on equal playing field. I'm not, uh, I don't have a head start. I'm not a Nepo baby of uh, the stream today. <laughs> and a Nepo baby. <laughs> Nepo Wonder. baby. Kind of sounds like a, uh, like a superhero or something. Like a, you know, satirical superhero. <laughs> Um, I, if it were me and I had more time, uh, I, I'm not in love with any of these, but let's just, let's just call it at sort of like what let's put more attention towards. So which of these three, um, yeah, we'll just throw some. Call them ABC or something. Yeah. What the? That's weird. Oh, one, two, three. Oops, I did ABC. Okay, ABC. And and yes, they'll just be in order. So no orbiting allowed. Stay at the same orientation. Uh, which version of SketchUp are you using? This is uh, SketchUp for Desktop 2023. Uh, Brad in the chat says he's been using the new Flip tool. Too enthusiastic. Thumbs up. Nice. So that's good to hear. Um, I'd be curious if anybody at any point wants to comment on the Flip tool. And if you used just flip along and the scale tool before, or if you used any other extensions to help you flip or mirror and just your experience, because I, I, I have no qualm saying it is definitely an improvement on the native functionality. So I'm glad of that. Yeah, yeah, let us know what your, Omar says he used the Keurig flip. Uh, tool. I like Curic. Lawrence says he used to use Flip Along. Um, Aaron also was saying that he can he can tell that this is a Tyson model because there's so many extra pieces. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna have my graveyard. You bet I am. <laughs> uh, okay, A B C. We 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 need to find out. But I let me see if I've got. Just for Aaron, and just because, do I have it? Oh, no. Nah. I don't remember what it was called. I've been working on a, a, a some new office kind of furniture. And I think there's a dozen versions of the desk and a dozen versions of the cabinet. And the model is just strewn with. <laughs> so. It doesn't cost you anything to have that, you know, like, you're not going to trip on it. So <laughs> I, I, um, I only ever look this way. It's all behind me. 
What are you um, talking? It looks clean from here. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So the poll, I'm going to end the poll. 52% B. A and C actually tied, but B takes the cake. Okay. Congratulations, B. You did good, kid. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to... I was hoping to open up a new model in... Uh... This might be opening up SketchUp 2022. That's what I get for trying to jump off, off for a second. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, stay stay on the uh, the script. We've been you know we've been sticking to the script this far, this far, thus far. This, this oh time. yeah, okay. <laughs> you even see your scale figure peeking out behind. <laughs> oh, can you see this? Okay. All right, this is for you, Aaron, and for all of our other friends who know that I'm just super messy. All right, so here's, <laughs> you know, his thumb, and then here's where it started, back there. Because, <laughs> you know, it was a desk, and then versions of a desk, and then versions of a cabinet, and then versions of a standing desk, and it got there. I, I I'm building this right now, but <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, let me let me get back on script. B. We're gonna go with B. Uh, oh, nice. Final so answer. Like actually, people people in the uh, in the chat couldn't actually see that. I don't know what's going on. Something funky, but um. Uh, okay, that's right on. All good. Hey, I saw it. See, I do get the head start. I still am a Nepo baby. I'm taking it home, babies. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, so B took it. Uh, Carlos coming in from Tijuana. Hey, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, Colin said one good thing about the new flip tool is that since it's uh, native to the platform and not an extension, it works on the web and iPad version. So you have a seamless, a seamless flipping experience uh, across all your modeling uh, formats, platforms. Mm, nice. So that's cool. Okay, so first of all, uh, we'll do something with this, but uh, I still don't love the way these legs work. I want a little bit more. Okay, so uh, let's just pause for a second. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Come on, guys. Let's what? fire up. Let's go. <laughs> We're going to fire up. We're going to fire it up. <clears throat> All right. First thing we're going to do is actually break this into geometry. It should be. Yoink. Oops, getting a little, a little careless with my eraser. And we'll do the same with this one. I could have done, saved myself a little bit of work by drawing these in. Anyway, no biggie. You know what I'm trying to get better at? Um, What's up? Is my typical old school workflow, if you want, if I want to select this, um, I'll create a view like this where I'm sort of looking straight down this side of the wall. And then I can select that geometry and delete it in one. That's the old school. And I, that's still what I do. Mm -hmm. But if you are good, with the new selection lasso, you can get in here and you can, and, and I get a little confused sometimes there. That's what I wanted. You can do the same thing from a lot of different views. So I'm trying to get better with the lasso tool, lasso selection tool for that reason. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And honestly, it doesn't take too much. I think that uh like when I'm on the iPad, I I always use the lasso select. And then when I when it like defaults to the the box selection, I'm like, what's going on? This feels so rigid and uh, you know, but if you're used to always rotating to the right view so that you can select everything inside the box, then um, you know, it can feel a little weird, but But yeah, that's a good point because I do think the lasso can save you a lot of time and be mm -hmm. more precise and stuff without having to navigate so much. The um, thing about it, and I, I don't know if this was just um, something that will be fixed in a, in a different version. The thing about the lasso tool that I don't is there's no indication. But there is on the straight. But I, the, the, as you draw out your thing, um, it, it's different because I'm used to, oops, hitting all my keys here. I'm used to this, my little bit of a visual reference that tells me, okay, dotted versus, and it does have that, but it's, um, you can see it sort of switches back and forth. And so it's a little bit, I, I haven't quite wrapped my brain around when it's one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. Um, from what I don't take this for, uh, you know, whatever, take it for what it's worth. It's just me. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I heard that it's really very hard to program this with the dotted line going along the <laughs> cursor selection. I don't know. Believe it. Um, believe it. But what do you know? Um, I can do that all day. <laughs> what else do we have on here? All right, so I, I think, you know, so we're, we'll still keep something like this. I, I think I just don't want where the feet come down to be quite as thin, but otherwise we can keep generally this. That's that's just my own reference on this one. Don't quite like. So let's experiment with that a little bit. What is that? It's like uh, half an inch, so we'll make it three quarters. Sounds good to me. Um, Keg, you said that that first, the one on the left kind of looks like a turkey leg. <laughs> Don't you want to take a bite? <laughs> <laughs> you got a drumstick, yeah. The drumstick box. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep all your chicken wings in there. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wonder, too, if uh, this top will be better straight or curved. I'm, I'm not sure, but let's, uh, let's try it, see how it looks. This will definitely look like a turkey leg. Why? I have that. I must have extended that at some point. I don't know. Huh. When I did that. No problem. Um, all right, let's. So uh, you said that the original idea for this was based on um, a project you were working on with Donovan. Have you ever made a Japanese toolbox for real in the past before? No. Nope. This was uh, this was the first time uh, I had tried it. 
So nice. have you ever made a toolbox of any kind? Uh, yeah. But, um, I think it'd be fun. Maybe in a future one, we'll we'll do like a Gerstner style, which is that one will just be an exercise in sort of laying out drawers and stuff. It has a lot more drawers. Um, yeah, I, I I had never done particularly this one, but I certainly have made you know a couple boxes and I haven't made a full on tool chest though. So I'm curious if anybody else has done similar stuff. Yeah, perhaps a full tool chest is in your future. Um, <laughs> uh, Donovan points out, yep, feel better box. I'd feel better with uh, Pokemon cards, that's for certain. Randy is saying how he's amazed. Awe-inspiring. Wow. Uh, at how fast you can switch tools, um, which is a testament to your modeling prowess, of course. Oh, well, thank you. Um, 20 and years will question... do that to you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Hey, you got the you got the keyboard shortcuts down by now. And then Lawrence also is asking if you have. Shame. I did now. Thank you. Shout All to right. Lawrence, good call. Good call. Um, why did I? Why is this off? Weird. Move this into the wrong place. Um, okay, so the, the thought with this one, I mean, this is, mm -hmm. again, depending on what we're doing, if this was a tool chest, then we're sort of adding more ornamentation as opposed to functionality. But again, if this is, like I said, uh, a keepsake box or a jewelry box or or a feel better box that holds some personal items so we're this is just a box in a box right that's what we're doing this one so let's sometimes a box for boxes sake it's all you need that's what you right I don't need to have a reason to be a box. It can just be a box. <laughs> how many people have... Okay, so he's... Oh, Go ahead. oh, I was just say, how many people have um, X-Ray mode on a custom keyboard shortcut? Because I go to X-Ray mode all the time. Uh, I find it one of the very useful ones. What's Transom saying? Yeah, drop your, uh, what's your shortcut? Is it X? That's a pretty good go-to, but is there, what do you use for X-ray mode shortcut? Drop it in the chat. Shift X, says Omar. Eric just going straight X. Randy too. Ooh, Brad F1 for X-ray. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Studio RT cool. Just go straight up toolbar at the top. Send me that nice X-ray uh, icon. Sometimes you know that's all you need. Can be can be uh, the whole story. Um. Okay. Now, in this one, again, we're going box and box and I, based on how this is looking, we're probably just going to do mitered corners on both of these. Um, right on. Um, Mm -hmm. 
I, I'm, Actually, uh, Lawrence makes up makes a good point. You wouldn't need to worry about what the you know how the corners resolve if you just carve it from one giant block of wood. Oh my goodness! What are we doing this for? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> outer shell, solid tools, outer shell, and. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we do these lives so we can get the the uh, genius insights from everybody yeah, across the, the world. <laughs> We're just gonna call this trust from a solid block. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, <clears throat> um or. We'll take these and, you know, we could do something different. Uh, make them finger joints or um, dovetails. And I, the simplest just to make them 45s, though. Maybe in the interest of time, I should do that. I'm not going to decide right now. I'm going to decide in a moment. <laughs> okay, save it for later is good. Okay. Um, for now, let's figure out, let's put the top on, and then we will make some adjustments to that. So let's get the lid figured out. So then the inside is just this piece. Let's say make it three eighths, not quite half an inch. And I don't have any sort of, I don't know, formula or something. So we're just gonna build this and then adjust it until we think that it will work as far as the whole tilting and, and, and fitting. So if we made this and one side goes like that and then we'll move it under and then Okay, so I'm gonna grab these two and group them. So that's the top of our lid there. I think. Just going over, we have some space. <laughs> this is, um, I think we've talked about this before. How many people out there, you know, you listen to music, but you also just talk to yourself and you're like, okay, and then with this, and you talk through the whole thing. Sometimes you got to talk it out. You do. You know? Verbalizing it, making it real, uh, you know, chat wise can turn it into, it's like chat GPT. If you, you know, chat it, it'll come to life. I don't know. Using any excuse to bring up chat GPT because it's a SEO buzzword and then more people watch the stream. <laughs> That's right. Um. <clears throat> How would we, what uh, what kind of descriptor would we use to build this chat GTP for us? GPT, GPT, GTP, G, GDP, gross domestic product. Yeah, I'm sure that all those um, exist. There's so many AI tools these days that yeah, <laughs> I'm sure they're all, it's all right.
So we're going to do one degree. That's all we'll need. That's that's some pretty smart thinking there, Matt, to uh, boost our boost us with the old chat chatteroonie. <laughs> well, Aaron already tried it with the uh, modeling from AI live stream that he did a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, maybe we need to do more, a lot more of those to. Uh... It's like, is the algorithm AI too? Like, are we? Does AI watch AI uh, content or what are we doing here? I don't know. Oh, Randy brings up a good point here. Uh, you were talking about, you know, not listening and just, or not listening to music or anything, just kind of talking to yourself through a process. He says he has to listen to classical music when he's modeling. Is there oh. anything in particular that, you folks listen to what's your go-to i gotta focus music that you listen to in your modeling i gotta say for me it's uh it's just jazz folks classic jazz miles davis little coltrane um that's what i go to when i need to focus what about you tyson is there a specific kind of music that you fall back on rock i just i it, it's it's either stuff that's fun for me or it's it, it becomes background because I listen to it too frequently. But yeah, I, mine is just plain old all kinds of rock. Uh, nice rock. That'll do it. Donovan says uh, medieval lo-fi. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard any of that, but I'll have to I put suppose. it out on the, what is it, like lutes and stuff like that? Oh yeah, like you you get harpsichord and lutes, just lo-fi. <laughs> you get the lo-fi girl playing harpsichord. Uh, harp, <laughs> harpsichord is the harp. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, actually, speaking of uh, medieval, we were talking about turkey legs earlier. That would work really well at a Ren fair. You know, you get the Renaissance festival, the huge turkey leg, and then you also got your chill lo-fi lute music to relax to um i'm curious matt what like jazz jazz is supposed you know there's all sorts of people who will say there's jazz there's good jazz there's old school i i don't i never got into it but how did you get into jazz like how do you uh sort of find your you weigh into that particular. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I honestly, I don't remember. Uh, oh, no, I do remember, actually. In high school, I watched a, a skate video um, called Video Days by Blind. And um, there's a part in there that has a Coltrane song called Training In. Um, uh, whose part is it? Uh, Gonzalez? Um, can't remember dude's name. Uh, it's a great part, legendary part. But um, yeah, he's got the uh, the Coltrane track on there. So actually, that's the first. That's a good question. It brings me back to uh, nice times of watching skate videos. Um, let's cruise back to some of these responses for the music. Uh, soft lounge, chill lo-fi. People liking the kind of the chill vibes. Mm -hmm. I hear that. No fi um kevin listens to podcast uh different podcasts some food for thought while working on his model so that's cool eric echoing that with podcasts oh randy says rush nice but although he says it, it distracts him so much that he can't get back to the model <laughs> So uh, maybe that's not good to <laughs> to listen to. Eric coming in with a Barry Manilow. 
I don't believe it. I'm I'm calling bluff on that one. I do not believe it. He's getting in the romance <laughs> mood <laughs> with the geometry. <laughs> nope, I'm calling foul. <laughs> Um, some folks saying jazz is great, punk is good, woodworking podcast. That's a good background, says Transom. Paul's working through his entire digital audio collection from A to Z, so he's currently on F. Full on uh, mask hysteria. Apparently, is the song he's or album? I'm not sure. But going through the Fs, so that's a bold uh, way to go for it, A to Z. Yeah. Uh, what are you guys modeling there? So this is a uh, Japanese-inspired uh, toolbox made out of wood. So it has a... Uh, Sort of this wedge locking mechanism on top, and then, uh, yeah, as you can see, I think keep stuff inside of there. This will work. Um, Very nice. So, where are you at with the lock? Have you? Is it kind of? Uh, how have you walk us through the the last five minutes or so of the process as we were talking about music and got distracted? Oh. I I just put the um, if I uh, hide these two pieces for the top. I didn't worry about getting it fit exactly right initially. It fits inside here and then is held on top by, by these other pieces um, like this. So I just gave myself uh, a little bit of room. In this case, I used uh, like quarter inch and brought that over. And then I drew out two more blocks. So let me unhide those. And the wedge, uh, there's no exact angle. So I just made this. In fact, you don't need to make it a wedge from both sides. We could have just done this from one side and that would simplify, simplify the build process actually. But I just, made this one degree in. So I, whatever that ends up being. And this, I should have been more meticulous. What is this? See, I 17.4, I actually should have been more careful. Made that a, well, that's just what it ended up from being one, one in, uh, like say one degree in from that. So that's just what it ends up being. I could have started mm -hmm. from there. Uh, what mostly was just working out the geometry. So once I say, okay, this wedge is this, and then uh, I just adjusted the other pieces to fit. And then cool. once I had that, I could say, let me just test that I can move this back and I can clear, I have enough space to clear over here when it tilts up and I look at my and this doesn't hit over here so we're okay so it's just sort of testing tolerances I, I I pulled this out a little bit more but I think that's about where it fits pretty well very nice legendary <laughs> Here, okay, so let's say, and I think 
for our purposes, like I said earlier, I'm actually going to just make that a mitered corner just to make it simple. So I copy this over and I just Um, got a little crazy with my flip along. Uh, oh yeah, flip to dip. Lippity. This What's your uh, high rest of model shortcut? Uh, for me, um, I've got these common ones all connected to shift one, two, three, four, and five. So nice. Um, and I do that because I'm so used to the old school method of locking that when I'm locking something, I want to be able to hold shift and then tab uh, hidden geometry on and off and x-ray mode on and off. And I'm still holding shift and lock and I can toggle it on while I'm doing that. Or I can toggle rest of geometry or rest of model. So for me, it's the ability to keep something locked and toggle through those modes that that I found that to be a nice, so yeah. So for me, it, it doesn't, the numbers don't matter, but it's shift one, two, three, four, five, those are the useful ones. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's that's my rationale. This, we should be able to just scale from the center. And so one of the details that we added to Donovan's box, of course, was that, that Pokeball uh, logo on one side. I thought on this one, it'd be fun to add a sort of Kumi Kumiko pattern, but I'm not going to actually build out Kumiko's um, very exactly created little wedges that create a pattern. We're going to cheat and draw it out as though we can use a CNC and or laser to help cut out the pattern. So we come up here to the top. Now, because of the nature of the box, right, one side we have the, the this is uh, not fully symmetrical. Right. So the top of this box, um, we want to taking that into account. So there's our wedges. I'm gonna make this centered now. On what we can actually visually see. But it's it's not centered as far as the actual top, but something like that. Um, and okay, so here's um, a bit of where my brain is at. Um, I actually, we're an hour in. I should really <laughs> start working towards uh, getting us in the layout. But <clears throat> word, I like that. Um, but I guess sort of, I, I, I still am in the idea phase of how, how should we make this work? And part of me is thinking, well, because we created this box in a box, we could just leave it and it's just a style element. We could actually take and make a false 
uh, bottom and this box only goes down about halfway and then you could lift the entire so you could take the top off get into part of the box you could lift the entire box out and then get into a sub um, area below oh okay and <laughs> if we were to do that and then i'm like and and do we take this pattern that we want to create and and make it so this pattern sort of wraps down around the side and if so does it wrap around the side of the box that gets removed or is this all one box that again we carved out of one piece of wood and so it's not removable <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah hey it's your it's your box uh decide what you want to do with it i'm I'm cool. I got nothing planned for the rest of the day. So if you want to do some intricate, you know, detailing around the side of the entire thing, hey, we got hours, man. Oh man. Good times, good times. Okay, so let's pretend. Let's pretend like we're gonna take make this a, a box that you could remove. So now uh, for the sake of simplicity I, uh, or quickness, I had put this inside this outer wall component, but now we've got to remove that. So let's cut that out, paste it back. Cut it out. Get that out, <laughs> paste it back. Um, Oh, I better be careful. Do I have this? Yeah, okay. It is a component. That's what I want. Um, oops, I lost something here. I think. I hit the wrong piece, the wrong piece here. Yeah, okay, so that, let's flip that. And that's what we want, so then we, we hide this. So here's, here's another thing that, I'm, again, can't, can't turn the little brain off. We could do something like this where, um, or we could make this box top look more uniform uh, and doing something like this. Where this should still work, but if we pull this out, then we could shift this whole thing over and remove it. And I'm undecided. I don't know. Anybody have strong opinions on that? Um, should we make uh, make this box top look like it's like we can see the obvious pieces, or should or what do you think out there? See if anybody thinks that something like this. Um, look better either way i think i want to extend these out uh, let's say you know, uh, hmm. stop it stop it <laughs> matt tell me to stop <laughs> I want to keep like uh, ide ideating on this top. Um, <laughs> yeah, hey, quit stop. it. Just, uh, just you know, ship it, post it, 
it's got to be that be done jody is saying uh, give it a natural undulating pattern on the top yeah um <clears throat> um yeah no so, i think you're uh i think you're good it's a good looking box in a box what it, it so where my brain's going right now is that typically like this is the type of thing that you do in SketchUp because it's way easier to do it here than to do it in real life. <laughs> um, whereas uh, at this point, I'm thinking of this as sort of almost a hidden. So we know how this works. But if. But if this were something, say, like this, and let's pull this out, extend this, and this side. Mm, I see where you're going. Yeah. So like, your, uh, your big brother can't, uh, you know, get in if he doesn't know the secret, whatever. Exactly. So the entire top looks something more like this but it does would have the wedges built in. That's what I want to do. We don't have time to do it because I'd have to rebuild that geometry. And, but I think that'd be interesting to play with and that these should extend now out to here. Our legs. I like I can picture it. You don't yeah. need to model it entirely, but I can picture it in my mind's mm -hmm. eye. Okay. That's what I want to do, but we're not going <laughs> to. A different time. Thanks everybody for indulging me for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. That's what this is all about. It's about uh, tangents and, you know, taking it wherever the, going wherever the design takes you. <laughs> Some people were saying when the top uh, was on there, it started to look like the Ark of the Covenant a little bit. Oh, it totally did, huh? Yep, I can see that part now. I can see Indy's shadow going across the wall, carrying it around. It's like the shadows in the model. Somebody earlier uh, commented that they've never seen somebody model with shadows on all the time. Is that normally like a default for you when you start is having shadows on just to have them or? You know what? Um, I appreciate that that's a real comment because if you're object modeling like this, you can afford to do so. But if you're modeling something like Eric typically does, where it's a landscape, you would not keep mm -hmm. shadows on and I would have turned them off. I, I didn't even notice. I didn't do it intentionally. I just happened to have them on and it hasn't slowed us down yet. But I totally can appreciate that. Um, yeah, you, you might not do that by default if you're modeling uh, bigger, bigger scenes. Yeah. Yeah, might not be for every project. You know, it's kind of nice. Because yeah, okay. real life. It's like that lo-fi vibe, just like kind of, you know, relaxing in the sunlight, bathing in the afternoon glow. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I, you brought that up again. We were talking about music, uh, and I hope uh, everybody appreciates Matt is a, I mean, it sort of got by, he, he, he was quite the skater back in the day. Yeah, somewhat. Um, yeah, definitely more of a filmer. That's why I, how I identified anyways, but I definitely skated a lot. Um, yeah, I've been out of the skate video game. I'm sure it's, uh, People were just doing wild stuff. Like I like came back and started watching a couple of videos after I had been out of the 
the game for a little while and it's like oh my gosh how fat how much people had progressed you know between whatever 2008 and 2010 i was like oh my gosh can you imagine what people are doing now um but hey the the skate video genre was uh very much in my rotation like in high school for sure okay so what i what i'm thinking here is um in the in the office now we we have access to both a cnc and a laser cutter so although <laughs> we've been waiting for that huh <laughs> <laughs> well it's lasers because of the title so <laughs> um so my thought on this is yeah while most of this you build uh with traditional uh, shop tools then um mm -hmm. to do this because it's not perfectly symmetrical and and fitting when you're doing kumiko you'll typically do like a grid um, or just something symmetrical or within he uh, hexagons or something. I want this to be both like, we get kind of the sensation of that, but it's also a little bit um, non-symmetrical, so asymmetrical. So my thought is we would take this, let's just say, We would just use the CNC to cut these shapes out, and then we'll do our uh, pattern inlay that we would stick in there with like a laser. Now for CNC, um, it wouldn't quite get into these corners, even if we were using a small bit. So that'd be something we'd clean up by hand, or we'd account for it and actually draw those corners. But let's just say we're gonna account for it by hand. And then our pattern, just trying to get an idea of size here. Uh, you know what, I better make that one. I made, I made this one eighth inch but i think that's what i want the total to be so i better make this a 16th instead because as i copy this around oops like this and i'm going to do it over here on the side then once this is all said and done it'll be an eighth total mm, okay and this is for the laser, the laser cut parts of it. Yes. And so, is that something I have, don't know anything about laser cutting stuff? Is that is that like a setting that you can change, or is it like you buy a laser cutter and it has a eighth inch laser, so that's what you're limited to? Um. It, no. Uh, so in this case, this is just this is just uh, what I'm thinking in my mind that I want the final output to be. Um, we'll make some adjustments before we we say you know here's the the, the laser file that we would send. Mm -hmm. um, are you talking about the depth it can cut or how do you mean? I was talking more about. I guess it's pretty like pretty can be pretty precise, right? It doesn't. Have to it can be whatever kind of width you want. You're just making it an eighth because it visually looks good to you. Yes. It's not like a CNC where you're restricted by how big the physical bit or whatever is. Right. Exactly. Cool. And that's why I think it would make sense in this case to kind of combine the two to like use the CNC to cut out the large shape to carve that out, mm -hmm. but then use a laser to uh, come in and do the details. Which would be like etched or something, or like 
would be actually into the I just know I know nothing nothing about how this kind of thing works. So I'm just like interested in what you can do. <laughs> well, give me give me give me let me finish this and then hopefully it will make sense as to what we're going to do or how how we how it worked would work. Yeah. Totally. All right, let's go. And jump in the gun. Ooh. Um I think so what I, what I want to do here is have this sort of, you know, it, it's it's broken up by this kind of curving uh, piece in the middle, but visually I want it to look like it's all the same. And then uh, so I need some pieces up here, but then my my thought is then we would have just sort of one up here on its own. Cool. Maybe one more over here, something like that. So visually, uh, it, we're not quite there yet, but something like this is, is the thought. And I have to be so uh, yeah, well, we're about there. I think I want to keep this contained in here, but I have to I, I want to keep in mind that I'm gonna explode these and then I need to keep enough space here that I still have that, you know, I need to create that one eighth. Um but I think I should have enough there. To make it work so so this is a component so i should be able to grab these ungroup them and this is where i need my um extensions because i could run cleanup on this and do this part uh faster than going through here Erasing these. Yeah. But don't have it just yet. Yeah, I hear you. Very common uh, experience around the around this time. Mm hmm. Um. Uh. We had Brad said a uh, suggestion for suggestion for next week's stream. <clears throat> pardon me. Take the final box design into layout and create shop plans that anybody could use to build the box. And check me if I'm wrong. That's the plan for this stream. Is that right? It sure is. Um, I just sure am behind on my time. <laughs> oh, you got time. You got time. Nothing but time. Uh, yes. Excellent suggestion. That is the idea. Excuse me. Oh, Eric suggested um, you could copy the face, delete everything, and then paste in place. Uh, you know what? That is an excellent idea. Um, that is uh, part of the delay. Uh, if that suggestion had come in from the beginning, but you couldn't see what I was doing because of the delay. So, excellent <laughs> idea. Um, just to be sure, um, I don't want to undo back, but uh, <laughs> if there, let me see if I can, because it's a good idea if, if anybody hadn't seen. So if I have up all this line work and I'm just trying to erase it out, what Eric suggested is if I just select the face, I could copy, select all of this, and delete it, and then 
paste in place with some adjustments for my um, geometry up there, but yeah, it's a good method. All right. Good call. Um, and then we also had a question about the extension that you were talking about. That was clean up uh, from TomTom. Tom. So I'll find the link and drop it in the chat for you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, a fantastic. Uh, um, I want to. Be sure that the placement of this is you know, something I like for a fully commit, but I, I think that's about right. Maybe this one I did want this, but maybe I, maybe I'll just something like that. And I've got one edge here. Anybody got big plans for the weekend? Um, doing anything fun? We were supposed to have friends come into town, but unfortunately, they got sick. Seems like oh, a common man. story this uh, this time of year. Um, you know, the change of of season brings with it uh, pressure changes in the atmosphere, sinus infections, and um, coughs and whatnot um so that's a shame but uh anyway he's talking about positive things anybody have any fun fun things going on you do anything in particular tyson this weekend um the uh that file that i opened and then nobody could see <laughs> uh, i i am still working on some <laughs> shop <file>. furniture yeah <laughs> um cool in 3d or in rl in rl Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag IRL. Nice. Yeah. Sometimes Hashtag it's IRL, uh, that's sometimes it is is nice to be working in the physical world sometimes. Um, yeah, that's that's what I got. Um, I copied uh, this lid and, and stuff over here by an exact amount, like in this case, three feet. So I remember I can copy it back. Uh, now we'll use that little trick that Eric was talking about. So I select, should be that this is all broken up. So if I select that, and that, and that, and that copy them and paste it so that is what you were asking about earlier this is the laser cut file that um, what I would think I would do is put a veneer and maybe even you know take a veneer and stack it up because uh, the laser we have at the office can cut through uh, up to a quarter inch, but th in this case, I think it'd be just eighth inch. So I'd stack maybe two or three layers of veneer on top of each other for a little bit of strength, stick it on the bed and just cut this out. And then I have this exact um, pattern and mm -hmm. And so after I've CNC'd this out, then I'm just taking this piece and and it's laser cut it exactly fits. to that, and it just fits. Like a glove. Like a glove. Um, you, you had a question about how 
you cut the upper mesh and underlying mesh. I think meaning like that, um, you know, honeycomb thing with the uh, with the other face. How do you get those to kind of intersect? Um, so in this case, I actually just made sure that they overlapped because if the geometry is exactly on top of each other, it will do it will automatically intersect in the same way that if I draw a line, you know, from here all the way across, it breaks all these other edges. So as long as they're in the same plane, they break. So um, let me I'll show that in another way. And as long as they're in the same context as well. Yes. Um, yeah, because they were asking, did you explode it all in in place? So you have to make sure you're not. There's not. They're not in separate groups. So I will undo for a mo to show that. Um, this was our our group, right? So mm -hmm. I had taken the lid. And I had just edited um, just the lid and from in here, select those two faces, copy them. Now I can delete the lid. And then I paste in place. And this, I made sure it was, I think, but I made sure that I had set it right on top of that. So then when I explode this, it should intersect with this other geometry, which it did. Um, you can see these thicker lines are showing me that some of these things I could test. I could come in here and say intersect faces that might resolve them. Looks like it does. And then, yeah, a little, uh, I'll just select the stuff I want to keep, copy it, grab all of this, and paste it in place after I've deleted the previous. So um, sorry if I jumped through that a little fast, but I hope that makes sense. Yeah, all good. Yeah, thanks for going back and walking through that. And, uh, um, and Lauren I'd, suggests I'd say... you could also go ahead. Oh, when you when you do something like this, it's helpful. I I could use inference locking, but it, uh, sometimes when you're not sure, like that, you'll have a good reference point. Uh, it's always helpful. I move that three feet. I move it back three feet. Just like use little known, rememberable uh, distances. Uh, what was the other suggestion? That's a good call. Um, Lauren said you could keep them in separate groups and select them both and say intersect with selection. Totally could. Does that also intersect as well? Um, so keep them in separate groups. Okay, say it again. So instead of like exploding and having them on top of each other, you don't have to go back to this. I know we're kind of no. running low on time, but um, saying that you could uh, intersect the groups when they're separated and then it would cut that geometry instead or something. I don't know. I uh, guess it would. And, and yeah, I won't go back, but yeah, you, you should be able to take uh, that group and this group I I think it's um, just intersect with model sometimes does what I want it to do and sometimes doesn't. And um, mm. but in this case, uh, totally great suggestion. It created the pieces. Got to be a little careful. I uh, got this one uh, stretch out, but yeah, I think that's what the suggestion was. And you can see it did leave the intersection. So good suggestion. Cool. All right. Um, okay. 
how fast can we build the build some shop plans out here and layout we we need to so i've got this this and I group those that's my lid so we did not create the version where we would lift this out as a separate box and that's okay this is just going to be a decorative piece it's kind of just how it works mm -hmm. Um, I want to see how quickly I can add a little bit of texture because ideally you would want to do that. Let me get rid of you guys in my graveyard over here because I certainly wouldn't delete that. <laughs> that's good to have you know for reference you can see where you it gives you some perspective to see where you where you're at where you've been um exactly <laughs> uh okay cool yeah well um if you i if you want to uh speed through some stuff i can i can uh fill the air if that's something you'd be interested in unless you want to talk through your process up to you I, I, I'm fine either way. Um, uh, let's see. I'm dragging in. Okay. Um, I, okay. So, uh, and let me explain. Typically, uh, when we share these, when we do these live streams, we, uh, stream, uh, the whole monitor. And that's why I made the mistake earlier of starting a different SketchUp session and it didn't show. Whereas right now it, the stream is just streaming SketchUp. So when I bring over, I don't think anyone can see that I've got a, a little side window with some textures that I'm just dragging into SketchUp, but you can you can see the effect, of course, that that's what's happening. But... Yeah, no, I can't see that window, but uh, yeah, you can imagine what a file explorer looks like. And you're, I feel like you would have a large library of uh, wood textures, is that true? Um, that would be a good assumption. I don't. I'm very messy. <laughs> I have, I have, I like. I should have created. I, I did a whole. I did a skill builder on creating a library of stuff. I did. Uh, we've done this before. I should have. No excuse. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's all good. Well, you you know you. Have what you need for uh, for what you need. Keeps well, each project fresh, I guess. It does, and um, this is another one of those things that uh, you know. We we know Eric is better about textures. Aaron and I are terrible um, about it, and that's part of the problem. Is um, unless you were going to take this out for somebody else or something, I like I I don't texture most of the stuff. I do. Mm -hmm. All right, but I'm just creating a, a texture from that board. This is some veneer. I just take some veneer um, screenshots or something from, you know, just sites out there that have veneer, interesting veneer. So let's select this and apply that new. Now it should be vertical and we don't want that. So we're gonna Uh, we had a question in the chat about um, is is it making more components that makes a SketchUp file heavy, or is it geometry that makes SketchUp uh, heavy and laggy? Um, and probably you have more insight into this than uh, than I do, but I will definitely say that um, depending on what is on your screen that SketchUp is like visually processing, that's what will significantly slow stuff down. So. If you can control visibility uh, of geometry, especially components that have a lot of geometry in it, with tags or um, or you know hiding it or some other way, that'll um, 
speed your model up for sure, but there could be a lot of things that are are slowing down your model. Um, is there anything you have to add in particular about components um, versus geometry that would make a model run slower? Um, definitely. So when I brought these textures in, and you can't see it over here, but each of these little textures is, you know, 100 kilobytes. It's not a heavy texture. What you will find is if you just go out there looking for like high quality textures, you'll find high quality textures. You may find a texture that is just like extremely large 10 megabyte texture file. And then once you've applied that to your model, your model is now 10 megabytes larger. And once you've applied multiple textures, even if they're smaller than that, and if you download models from the warehouse, you'll, you'll start to see that because that's something that maybe is not commonly known or appreciated. Um, so, so textures, as far as file size is definitely one of those things that can, um, kind of mess with your model and your file size and performance, because if you have high quality textures also displayed, um, but yes, other than that, then geometry, if, if you have just very detailed models that you're replicating trees, anything with detail, and then you're replicating it many times, it's like you said, Matt, SketchUp's trying to on like to real time display all that. And it, Pretty easy to bog it down if you're if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point about the textures too, because you know sometimes you think if you're rendering you want the super high quality textures, but depending, I mean, if it's you know if this box is in a room that you're doing a rendering of and it's only you know thirty pixels wide in your final render, then you don't need some you know eight thousand pixel wide wood grain texture because it's just going to get shrunk down anyway. So um, if you're doing a beauty shot of this, that's going to be on a billboard or something, you know, maybe then you do need the super high quality texture, but it's always good to think about what your final um, deliverable is and, and um, how much is going to show on the screen. Definitely. Um, Randy, when talking about uh, textures and rotating them said that, um, right click and rotate 90 degrees is a faster way to reorient textures well you know what so let's do that that could be a little right tip. little tip uh where is it when you're <laughs> is it when you're in the texture in the texture like when you're actually like when Over you're here? editing position i'm not sure uh I'm I'm wondering. Um, I think yeah. So like this, uh, rotate ninety like that. Yeah, I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah. So good call. And then I'm gonna sample that, select everything, paint it. And let's just say this. something like that um okay i think we'd use uh you know we'd do some more but let's just let's keep going we're we're definitely pressing time here yeah all good so now we need to take this and kind of set it up for layout or how we want to build it, mm -hmm. uh, which means we need to, for me, this is one of those cases where all my, all my uh, copies of my stuff do get in the way. I want I want a clean version. So let's copy this, let's save it. And uh, paste it here. 
And this is in the same uh, version of SketchUp, but let me know if that doesn't come through. It should. Um, yeah, let me double check here. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, we all know, like, if you were doing this just for your own personal um, use in the in the shop, you might do a really sloppy version of this, take a few dimensions, and um, let's try to build out something that we could at least hand to somebody else and give most of the stuff. Again, we're... I got, I, I, I totally can own getting distracted, but in the fun part of this, which is like just experimenting with versions of it. And I got sucked into experimenting a little too much. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, nobody, uh, nobody should get in trouble for experimenting too much, you know? <laughs> Got to get in there and get the Bunsen burners going and, uh, you know, do some tinkering. That's what it's all about. I'll just, this would be like a quarter inch ply or something. So I'm just going to have a generic color. Um, so let's have a view. And here's where my, my typical modeling you know, is, is, is this style that has kind of this blue, it's, it's darker. I like it better than having a white background, but once we're going to move to layout, I should probably, um, pick a different style. So let's see, what's a, what's a style here that might work for us. Some of these could work fine, but we obviously need texture. So. Speaking of this texture, one. Transom had a question earlier if the uh, texture that you put on there was walnut. Um, I used two, and it just happens to be the one I grabbed. One was walnut and one was uh, brown oak, uh, which is, yeah, from a uh, thank you across the pond. I think some of the most beautiful brown oak comes from the UK. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and good eye on the walnut. Mm hmm. Let's do something like this. Um, okay. Let's make our edges a little darker. I've still got X-ray mode on. Okay, so um, kind of want hmm. talking to myself again. Let's start building out scenes. So we've got our our basic overview. We'll take a couple perspective views here. A couple beauty shots. Well, beauty shots. That's right. Yeah. Mind blowing. And um, th this is gets into a little bit of some kind of personal preferences and how you. Um, so if I come back here, I've got these. So good. 
Um, I, I can create multiple copies and build this out into one SketchUp file, uh, exploded views, things like that. Um, if it gets really complicated, maybe this would be multiple uh, SketchUp files, but in my case. So I want, I want a version where I have this and the, oops, and the top kind of off to the side as well. So that's another one of our beauty shots. Nice. And then... And then we should be able to uh, get another version over here. I should be able to use this one. Uh-oh, where's my standard views? Come back. Come back, little house. Where'd you go? <laughs> Have this now maybe for our standard views and and I'm going to get in trouble right now right if I need to take a, mm. a side view uh, by copying this this way now I've got multiple things stacked up so uh, so <laughs> just move it off into <laughs> I know I, it's be so messy i have to check my scenes because as, as i start adding these in then they're going to show up if you know i'm not careful mm -hmm. let's do this and i'm going to take and for these i'm going to turn off the color style so i'll just pick um Something maybe like this, different style, and save a scene. Clearly, I should be naming these, but still time. That's a nice thing. You can name them after the fact. Mm hmm. Um, yep. Tyson's not using a three button mouse today. He, uh, he has in the past, but, uh, back to the tablet. He said at the beginning of the stream, I don't know if he didn't catch it, but easier on the shoulder. Uh, well, and the wrist too, or what, uh, both true. I've been, yeah. uh, I've, I, I, I don't know if it's, um, cause I changed my desk setup a little bit recently. But I also, mm -hmm. uh, I've been playing in a volleyball league. Both happen kind of at the same time. And so my shoulder's been uh, aching a bit. And uh, I don't know if both are to blame, one and more than the other. <laughs> uh, the yeah, body does what know, it does. It's good to have options. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't always tell you why, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doesn't tell you. And sometimes you just... Yeah, it's a simple, you just moved wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm sure everybody can appreciate. Uh, I've thrown my back out just tying my shoes. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm sure there, there are cases out there where uh, even something sillier than that, you've thrown your back out. <laughs> yeah, it's always the silly stuff. It's never bring it back to skateboarding that's that's where my friends and i always got hurt is when you're just messing mm -hmm. around not not like the big trick that you're you know thinking that you're gonna get hurt on it's just like whatever messing around next to a curb and then you fall and uh twist your ankle why has it gotta be like that <clears throat> ah, i don't know Uh, 
Um, okay, let's. Eric has been in the chat, but it looks like he's taken off. So thanks for watching. Oh. He says he's the, yeah. What could Aww. you possibly have to do that's more, more interesting or fun than this? Come on. <laughs> I hope a lot of things. <laughs> we haven't even got to layout yet. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> stick around for at least for that. Um, he does say we should have a poll. So what we should model next, um, because we haven't decided. So I actually will, I'll start up a little Q and A and say, what should Eric model next week? So drop your suggestions in the Q and A. I will readily admit we are going long, so. Happy trails, buddy. And anybody else who needs to leave. Understood. Get your weekend on. Hey, I'm all in. <laughs> back in the glory days, you know, do the four hour streams on Fridays. I'm like, bring it back. Bring it, you know. Make SketchUp Live long again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Careful, you may regret saying that. <laughs> I am a couple hours. Uh, I know a lot of our viewers are probably watching from later, but it is 4 p.m. for me here. So, hey, I got, I got time. So we need to, we need to let you get on your way. No, not at all. I can go my own way. And uh, <laughs> stick around. I like. I do like seeing the 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 care that you put into setting up like a two D scene layout. Because I I do rarely, you know, get to get that composed kind of um, you know visual communication of of um of your model so you know I'm happy. I, I appreciate that i i often still wish that i like had a a clearer picture of what i was trying to to communicate because i i it's just a it's something that i do infrequently and i feel like i i really like good like communicative um, illustrations that like really show how something comes together. And, I, and it's a, I think we talked about that uh, on some of our previous stuff. It's, it's, it's its own art form, I think. Absolutely. All right. So I am not entirely, we're just going to let it be this. <clears throat> Something like this. And then, again, we're just sort of building out more and more pieces over here. That's all right. Um, some of the, some of our astute viewers will certainly have noticed that I did not, uh, this, the bottom here is not datoed in correctly. I didn't, I didn't resolve all the joinery and we're going to proceed anyway, but I'm admitting from here that I, I did not, uh, resolve all the joinery in the way that it should be. Hey, that's good with me. I don't uh I don't need to see all the proper joinery. I know <laughs> it's a box. Well, it it won't work. The bottom will fall right out. 
<laughs> so oh. whether whether you want to see it or not, it's uh my build is flawed. It is a trick box. Like you were saying earlier, it's like a false stop. This is a trick box. The bottom comes out. Um, that would actually, uh, this is my contribution to what Eric should model next week. You did the, um, you did the, uh, uh, gosh, I can't, I can't think of it. The visual um, optical illusions. Mm -hmm. you did the optical illusions? You should do um, like magic tricks. You know, you go to the magic shop and you get a little trick that has a oh. box with a false bottom on it, and then it, you know, whatever. Um, that'd be kind of a fun exercise. Huh. Come on, there. Yeah, magic tricks. I'm. I'm. Uh, let's. Uh... Let's all gang up and make Eric do magic tricks. I, I have no idea how he was going to do them, but. Yeah, we can make a model, a deck of cards or something. <laughs> uh, now, I think these, like uh, everything else we did, uh, we would just build with miters so nice nice looking good I think that's, uh, those are all the main pieces there. Uh, and out this way. And then we need the top. And how is that honeycomb uh, pattern being made again? How is that? So um, in the in the I don't know. We that would have to create as two separate files. So in this case, um, over here we'd lay out. Let's see this. So we'd have these pieces that we're cutting, and we could cut this angle. This piece we would cut and then we would have this piece as a, um, it depends on the software you're using, but let's just say uh, we export this out as a DXF. Okay. And then in your CNC software, you know, however you want to set it up. Uh, when we cut this piece out, uh, we'll you know we'll document how uh, that that we've cut it out, like you know whatever it is, and then we'd lay this on the CNC. Tell it, you know, let's say this corner here is the corner, and then we mm -hmm. uh, set that to our zero spot on the CNC. And then tell it to cut these two. So we would export this right here. So maybe we would set this up as a page. Um, that we do, let's say, from SketchUp, not necessarily from layout, but we'll, you know, but it'd be good to have a have this. And then in the same way, we would do the same thing. Oops. This would be our laser file. Now, it, if we wanted to optimize, <laughs> if we wanted to optimize this, uh, we could do such, you know, 
Um, you could take, move this closer. It doesn't want to move for me. It's weird. Um, and that way the, the, the piece of veneer or whatever we're using doesn't have to be as big. Uh, so we'd move this in closer, something like that. Move this over. But um, if we wanted to just, I, I think this would work fine. This is only going to fit, you know, this, Sorry, I uh, shh. Um, this, <laughs> my phone, what are you? This is only going to fit no, this way. No, that's my so... soundboard. I'll take responsibility for that. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> anyway, we could optimize this so that the piece of veneer we're cutting doesn't have to be as big. I won't worry about that necessarily. Let's just say in theory, we've taken our veneer, because I think this is how I would do it. One way I'd do it. I would take a piece of, let's say, quarter inch um, MDF, and I would use a, a light spray adhesive, and then I would take my veneer and stick it on there. That way, when the laser cuts it, it would cut, I'd set the settings enough to cut through the veneer, uh, but it's not going to cut all the way through the MDF, and that preserves kind of its location, and it keeps it from flying around on the... And then I would go in and I'd remove the hexagons and carefully, you know, very carefully, because this will be super fragile. We could put blue tape over it as well um, and cut it with the blue tape on it as well. And that blue tape will help it give it a little bit of strength as we're transferring it mm. to the uh, over to the piece here. So, but either way, so this is our laser. We would take this and export this as a DXF, export this as a vector PNG from layout. A couple ways to take this to a laser cutter. Cool. I like it. Pew, pew, pew. I also want to say thanks, everybody, for the uh, suggestions. I've added them to the list. so. Um, keep them coming. If anything comes up, drop it in the little Q and A thing. If you have something you want to see Eric model next week, but uh, yeah, thanks to all those who have added things in so far. Yes. You know, I'm gonna break the door part separately from this, and also I need the door come as a whole. I think when we were talking about this as a as a friday live modeling project uh, aaron right away was like you want to model something from scratch and then take it to layout from scratch and document it you should be careful about doing that <laughs> holy cow yeah no i like the uh, the ambition you know <laughs> Just keep it going. I feel like you're almost there. You got pretty much all the uh, scenes and stuff set up, right? Um, yeah, we should be able to take it over. I think. All right. So from here, let's just grab and say this is our... I'm being careful. If you click on a scene up here, you can select it and that way I can say I you know in I can I can rearrange this stuff later, but if I select it before adding a scene, it'll add a scene after that. But if I double click it, it'll go to that scene, and that's not what I want. Mm. So 
dimensions for the top, dimensions for the sides. Um, I'm going to do a version like this as well. So we get a 3D view. Um, and, and the other thing that I think would be interesting is to do a kind of a sequence of like, here's a recommended how to build this. We're not going to do that. Um, that would be interesting. I would, uh, but that actually probably should be a whole session all to itself. Like an instruction manual. Yeah. Yeah, that last view reminded me of like a instruction man. I always like those clean, um, you know, line work looking illustrations and in instructions. Um, you know what? I have. I'm going to try switching this live. I may break the whole stream. I again, I'm streaming SketchUp, and we're trying to go to layout, and I think OBS is going to not show it. So. I'm going to try and do this live. Man, we'll I did not. Don't mess up. <laughs> I did not uh, consider that. All right, you'll have to let me know if that uh, worked out OK. I can see it on my screen. I'll see when it comes through. Yes. Okay, it's working. Ooh. That, that was uh that was some uh unfortunate oversight on my part. Hey, you're good. It's all working. I phew. Okay, well, um as most if you've ever worked in layout, um then you know that uh, over half of the, the stuff of layout is setting it up in SketchUp so that it comes across. That's why we took all that time to make those scenes. So we're going to take and where's our uh, scenes here? I think this one will be our number one hero scene. Hero! <laughs> Epic. Oh, you know what else I'm going to do? What's that? Uh, I can use a, a Wacom tablet fairly effectively in SketchUp. I, it just does not, not in layout. All right, goodbye to the Wacom. I'm switching back to a mouse. Bye bye, welcome. Yep. And I don't have, uh, I could have picked a template. I, um, I, you know, if you're going to do this frequently, you should have some templates set up. Uh, I didn't do so. Let me just see if I can grab something from a scrapbook that's, uh, Yeah, if you're not if you're not familiar with layout, scrapbooks are like kind of collections of of pre-made assets. So um, you can pull in stuff that's all kind of the same style. If you have title blocks or um, sections or callouts or whatever other stuff you want to add in, um, so you don't have to build that stuff from scratch. And it is just uh, layout, you know, information. So you can still edit it um, and move it around and everything. The same as you could if you made it from scratch, but um, it's it's pre-made in there for if you want to use it. I think uh, this probably doesn't qualify as a Japanese style box anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, it's got that lock on it, so. But yeah, <laughs> we'll see what that. 
So I've got that. And then where's my pages here? So duplicate this. Just gonna make two copies here. This one will be Lawrence is asking if you're getting paid overtime for this uh, for this extra time in the session. I don't know. Are any of you getting paid overtime for watching me go overtime? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, that's a lovely thought. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, let's talk to the uh, the bosses on that one. If if we got paid overtime, we would go overtime more often. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, eight eight hour stream. Exactly. <laughs> um. Is there is everybody ordering another beer out there to, to keep up? <laughs> Definitely has been talk of uh, more trips to the fridge. Mm-hmm. I hardly endorse that. Keggy's asking if uh, if you can build Trimble for the overtime. Hey, give it a shot. It's worth a try. Just send all your requests to Aaron at sketchup.com and uh, <laughs> we'll make sure to take care of that for you. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're not going to have nearly the time. But I mean, it's about the, uh, I feel like a lot of these, of the time in the stream, we don't have the full time to give everything like the full do that it, you know, deserves, but, um, I think you get the idea of what you, what you would do. Hopefully so. Um, yeah. I think into that, yeah, we'll just do a simple thing here, but that, to that, uh, point. Again, really, this should be its own own full session is like, here's the starting box. We're not messing with modeling it. We're just going to mess with layout. We've done that a little bit before. I think we can stand to do that again anytime soon. Yeah. All right, so this, this one I will set at a scale. Let's see, what do we got? get away with uh, one to six is kind of a random scale but I'm just picking whatever will fit on our page and um, if I want to you know if I, if I if I go through these and I'm like huh you can create custom scales so somewhere between one to three scale and one to six scale I could get a little bit bigger if I went into the Document setup? Nope, I think it's preferences. So I could add a scale in here that is, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, we could do more. One more. Oh, cool. I didn't know you could do that. Totally. Um, so yeah, you can create any sort of rando scale you want. Because what size of paper is this? This is just a um, letter paper, US letter paper, uh, eight and a half by 11. Gotcha. Something like that. Let's 
Did I really? <laughs> I'm like, I'm wondering if I uh, really made this. Okay, two inches sounds better. If I made it two inches and 13 sixty-fourths or something. <laughs> hey, you're all about precision, you know? Uh -huh. That's how the exactly how exact you are when you get into the shop. I think this one. So because I've set a scale, I should be able to uh it should stay here. This one is a, a scenario where I might draw attention, right? We've got to figure out, we've got to call out the uh kind of compound cut that's happening here. Mm -hmm. This one, take. Uh, did I? And these guys again, we, we um, maybe we would make these vector instead of raster, uh, so we get really clean line of work. I, Eric has shown this, and I've seen this as well. Uh, it it you can get much cleaner line work, but if you export in a decent resolution from raster, you really do get a, an output of really usable line work. So vector, if you have a simple model like this, it's not that intensive it's it's okay to use but you shouldn't need to use it that often that you you feel like anyway it's just one of those things like yeah, i think some people feel like well vector's the only way to get clean line work and actually you get really good line work from raster too mm -hmm. yeah totally reminds me of the uh of the materials conversation from before, you know, think about what your final output is going to be. Like if it's like a trade show booth graphic or something like that, where people are going to be right next to it and it's huge, then that makes a difference versus if you're printing off an eight and a half by 11, you know, mm -hmm. you don't need the extra um, fidelity. Okay. Why? trying it won't rearrange my pages for me it's very weird hmm. um, okay Colin says you need to be in list view to do that I trust Colin knows better. Was that always the case? My my brain wants to think you could do that in uh, in whatever this is called thumbnail view, but maybe uh, you know my memory is very flawed. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I certainly don't know, but. Uh... Um, okay, well, I don't know how much of the rest of this, you know, we need to build out because the rest of this is kind of just doing more of what we've been doing and, and really to do this well, it's been more time. So, right. Yeah. I mean, I think might, people get the idea. You get the it. dimensions in there, you get the. This one I did do random 31, 30. <laughs> oh, what a fantastic. <laughs> uh, this, this one is 31, 30 seconds. That's great. 
It's like the, uh, you know, the brown M&Ms for the, on the rider or whatever, like it's just in there to make sure people are actually reading the plans and not just taking stuff for granted. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, yeah, let's call it. Uh, so we've started yeah, to set up. Go. And then you can go report the bug of uh, not being able to drag things around in thumbnail view. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, just playing around, but yeah, no, I think this looks, this looks good. And, and Aaron can later on tell us that he was right. And be like, he shouldn't try and do all that in one. <laughs> oh, he already did. <laughs> he was, uh, of course he did. Flaunting it in your face earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good as it should be. Um, I don't know. That was fun. I, I should, I should know. I, I am very guilty. I was having fun with the box kind of ideation part and that's just where it's fun to get lost in. So, mm -hmm. I, but that aside, I still, even if we'd kept things simpler and, and saved some more time, we still wouldn't have enough time to fully build out a, you know, a very robust set. We need to, Respect that it takes a little bit of time here. Yeah, respect the process, but yeah, absolutely, right. it definitely does. Yeah, Brad suggested earlier a whole session on layout uh, for a live stream, so I, I did add that to the list, Brad. So um, it's under consideration. Uh, and like you say, yeah, sometimes it does, or it does take a long, you know, some effort, some good effort to make a good looking. Uh, 2D, uh, you know, set of communication documents, plans. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it's very cool. So should I cue the... Yeah, let me uh, audience? say this out. Uh, I just, so a huge thanks. Huge thanks, everybody, for hanging with us, especially for hanging with us a little bit long, though, as Matt noted. We, Aaron used to go a lot longer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks Very for true. hanging out. Uh, it was fun. Uh, thanks, Matt. As always, good times, buddy. Hey, thank you. I want to say that that model is staggering. I think that the layout doc is unreal. Oh my god! Wow. So, who's who's that? Go. That's all the same voice, world. right? Is that just a generic? I think there's two different ones. One, in my opinion, much better than the other. One sounds like James Earl Jones, and then one sounds like kind of me just kind of pu pushing my voice to be like, wow. <laughs> uh, not quite the same. Awe-inspiring. Yeah. Okay, well, can you give me a... Okay, for those of you who don't know, Matt does an excellent Doc uh, and Marty impression. Uh, and, and, and so I want you to take me out with like what you should have said to me at the beginning when I was like, we're going to do a model and we're going to do layout documents. We're going to do it all. And you should have been like, doc, no. <laughs> Tyson, you don't have enough time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks y'all. That was good times. Everybody have a great weekend. And see you next week, Eric. Eric's up. Uh... <laughs> That's it. Yes. Thank you, Tyson. Nice work. Thanks, everybody. Take care.